Dark Souls is one of my favorite games. Some consider it to be the best of all time. But what if Dark Souls had guns? Well, that'd be Remnant from the Ashes. And at some point through playing the game, I asked myself... Let's find out. But before we start, let's go over the rules. First, I can only use the repeater pistol. All damage I do must be done from shots fired from the pistol or mods attached to the pistol. Two, I can use summons as long as they are mods attached to the pistol. And finally, no glitches or exploits allowed. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Starting off, we make a character, then we grab the scrapper class for the better armor. Then we immediately set out into the world in order to search for our destiny. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We're gonna go fight stuff. After gathering random loot, we grab the Ward 13 keycard, and then behind this bookshelf is a secret passage. There's not actually much up here, but there is some spare scrap and two pieces of the Drifter set. From here, we head out to find some enemies. That way we can test our pistol damage and assess where we are. Against certain basic enemies, we do about 17 damage. However, if we hit a weak point like the head, we get about 34. Activating our attached mod Hotshot increases our damage to 22 and adds the burning effect. However, shooting enemies at a long distance away has a high damage falloff, so it's generally going to be avoided. An interesting thing about Remnant from the Ashes is that each run is generally randomized, so no two runs are going to be exactly the same. Thus, routes and paths followed don't really matter as, well, nothing can be guaranteed. That is, aside from a few bosses or items. And since each run can be so unique, I'm not going to focus on the entirety of the run, but rather some highlights and the bosses that I fought. After some exploring, I found the Burden of the Gambler Ring, which is incredibly useful for this run, as it increases our critical chance and critical damage. However, it disables the bonus damage from hitting weak spots. I decided it was finally time to head back to Ward 13 and do some exploring. There are three different floors beneath the main floor. The first one is the tutorial area, which, honestly, nothing is here. The, the second floor, however, has tons of stuff in it. However, you need the Ward 13 keycard to unlock the door, which we already obtained. Let's go through our shopping list, grab the trait book, jump through a window, admire the scenery, open a door, realize we don't have the key, grab this fuse, listen to our elders, Replace the fuse. Break physics. Turn on the power. Open this door. Realize there's a secret hiding spot. Turn off the power. Loot the secret hiding spot. Find the key. Turn the power back on. Go absolutely bonkers on these chairs. Grab a secret trait book. Use the key. And grab this SMG because I have a fear of missing out. We're done with Ward 13 for now, so we're going to head back out and finally face our first boss. And just like that, the boss is defeated. After some more exploring, I find a stockpile circlet, which increases our ammo reserves by 50%. Doing some more exploring, I... That's not galvanized iron. Anyways, I convince this man to give me his life savings, and decide to... Drop it! Now on to community service, I promise to protect grandma as she gets out of her rocking chair. Which in reality just means shooting things until she can get out of her rocking chair. For about a whole two minutes. After which she decides to cause property damage. A little more exploring and I find the gunslinger's ring, which can increase our fire rate if we're in a pinch. I decide to sit and harass Mudtooth until he finally gives in and gives me his pocket watch. And with all our slots filled out, 
we can finally head to our next boss battle. And from here, on to the next. I have a big health bar, but it's nothing burn status can't. Well, crap. Come on. Why do I feel like this is an omen? I figured now was as good a time as any to increase my dragon hearts, and with a little bit of practice, patience, and extra healing, I finally do it.
hard-fought and well-earned win. Alien Tower, massive property damage, you know, the usual. Entering the tower, I meet Puzzle Master McGee, who decides he really doesn't want to deal with me and banishes me to the labyrinth. However, he made the greatest mistake of all time, because he left me with cool floating stairs and also a red crystal to just teleport wherever I want to. Let's see, lore? Mm-hmm. Or lore? Forget it, we're going in. Welcome to the Barren Wasteland, affectionately known as Ohio. Taking a few minutes to memorize this weird code, correlating it to the compass on the floor, and solving a neat floor puzzle. Which of course obviously opens a floor hatch, which leads you to the greatest drip in the game. I meet a local resident and ask him for dog care tips. Why would they? I am not. Stop! Don't. I did what. Unfortunately, you have to put down dogs that bite. Well, now I just feel terrible. So, let's wash away these bad feelings with the next boss. Trouble. 
Well, cool boss, cool moves. What's next? certainly was a unique experience. And I have a skull, I guess. I find a very good boy that I can pet. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? It's you. It's you. <clears throat> okay, its breath is a little rotten. Huh, this thing looks weird. I guess I have a key for it. So, um... Just gonna stick that in there, and... I pet the very good boy again, because he deserves it. I do some snooping, and I find an old abandoned gladiatorial arena. Hey, what's this button do? Um, That's probably bad. So this place is way less abandoned than I thought, and I'm fighting for my life. Eventually I'm able to clear out everyone, and I obtain a key for my troubles. Alright, let's just put that in here, and... Yeah, I'm not paying for that. I granted an audience with the King of Ohio, who wants me to go fight Mothman so that I can repay him for the property damage I caused. In fact, as a sign of goodwill, he opens a portal to Florida. Ah, good old Florida. I can smell the despair and crime rates already. I mean, sure, alligators are a little scary, but, you know, it's not that bad. Oh god! Uh, hello? You got a phone I could borrow? Oh, I'm in danger. Well, it's a bad start, but I can pick it up. I guess not. Okay then, round two.
that was a little close. I'm sure the next boss won't give me any problems. Right? I'm sure this will be a nice fight with no problems at all. Alright, one more time. No time to pause, That's next it. one's up. <laughs> well, it's time to kill Mothman. Oh god, he has a twin. Well, third time's the charm.
And now that that's out of the way, we have some business to take care of. We head back to the King of Ohio and give him the Heart of Mothman, for which we're rewarded with a key. We pop that key in this weird looking lock, and all of a sudden we end up in Wonderland. We accidentally get involved in the middle of a civil war, and after some tactful fighting we're treated to a cutscene about the horrors of being stuck in unarmed combat. And then some dialogue that's really important to the story, I swear don't skip this- Ah, who cares, let's go to the next boss battle. head straight on to the next.
Now, some of the more astute of you may be wondering, hey, where in the world is the second boss? Yep, he's in the floor. But eventually, we do get him out. And since that's over, we can now face the last boss of Wonderland. This is going fine. It'll be easy. So yeah, spoke too soon on that. So, with the Totem Father down, it's time to move on to our next objective. Shoot a lock, get a key, go back to Ward 13, upgrade my stuff, put the key in the thing, turn on the computer, turn on the mirror, walk through the mirror into some... Whoa, okay. Rest of the checkpoint, and get ready for the final boss. Once again, the children of the core think to change the inevitable. They do not see the truth, the futility of their actions. We bring purity to chaos, serenity to bedlam. All will be consumed. This is necessary and good. The children do not understand. The children believe their lives worth living. The children are wrong. The worlds and the core of the worlds live in pain, agony, discord. We bring peace, equality, silence. All are one within our embrace. 
The children resist what cannot be resisted. They fight a battle that cannot be won. Their actions are ultimately irrelevant. No matter how many times they rise, they will be destroyed. Their time is over. We will consume all. After repeating this cycle for about 8 more minutes, I realized I could be doing more damage if I just inflict a status.
And with that, the final boss finally falls. This was a fun run. I actually recommend you try it yourself. Tell me how it goes in the comments. Thank you for watching, and have yourself a good day.